Right, welcome to the Linux Cast with Martin and Matt. Hi, Matt. How's it going? I'm doing well, Martin. How are you? Well, well. What you been up to this week? Well, I've been struggling for like last six months trying to get MPD and uh, NCMPCPP. It's the worst name for a music player ever. Um, but I finally got to working this week. This week, um, I'm, I'm my quest to finally stop paying each month for Spotify is finally here. That's what I've been doing. I've, ne- oh, right. I've never heard of those. Uh, what is it? Streaming or is it? No, they're just basically players for your own collection of music, but they're terminal based. So MPD is a it stands for Music Player D- Daemon. It's a like a it's a music server. It plays and it runs in the background every time your system starts up. And NCMPCPP. I only can say that because I have it written down in front of me. Uh, <laughs> um, that's like a, a console terminal based music player. So, uh, you know, I'm a nerd, so I try to use everything in the in the in the terminal. So that's what I've been doing. It's a, uh, you know, it's fine. I don't know. It sounds a bit elitist to me. What's, what's, <laughs> wrong, with G, what, yeah. how, what's wrong with the GUI? Well, or Clementine, or <laughs> uh, those are for noobs, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm gonna work on Neo right. next. That's the email client in the terminal. So. Oh, that's a bit too uh, high level for myself. I'm quite happy with um, web-based um, emails. Oh, I can't stand. Uh, I can't stand web-based. web-based. I, I can't do it. It just it drives me nuts. I have to have a client. Anyways, what, you, what about you, Martin? What have you been up to? Um, not a fat lot. It's been a bit bit busy with work and whatnot. Um, but I took a bit of a... Uh, uh, moving from Last Pass, Last Pass even, to Bitwarden. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, Last Bat, Pass has got a lot of bells and whistles and it automatically fills it out and stuff like that. A uh, bit warden I'd got because I've got a two-factor authentication key. So I thought I'd start using that instead of dealing with texts and whatnot and logging in for my Google Mail, uh, my Google login for whenever I need to check things like that. Uh, but, yeah, bit warden seems okay. Uh, for the $10 a year, I mean, you can't really go wrong. Um, I mean, if you don't want the t- two-factor authentication, you just want the basic, you, you can just use it as is for free yeah i got the free version i don't i probably should pay probably should get the two-factor but i haven't i haven't done that yet yeah i've been yeah, too busy messing fine. with my elitist console terminal applications <laughs> see it, it, it sounds like he just needs some uh, gui on the go <laughs> um let's have a look so if we go on to the news um the contact news information martin week, Oh, contact right, information okay. you got it we, <laughs> right if, if we don't have that we can't be contacted that means we don't exist all right so let's go right you can contact us on twitter at linuxcast and matt can be contacted on at mtwb and myself martin can be contacted at martin twit the number two and you as in y-o-u not as in you <laughs> So where have you been up to this? Uh, sorry. Oh, are you going to cut some of this? <laughs> no. Who cares? Oh, rubbish. No, right, no so it's, it's new... much more entertaining if it's, uh, you know. Keep, it's, keep the bloopers in. It's natural, <laughs> man, yeah. I yeah, mean, Maybe someday we'll cut the bloopers, but, you know, what? You know, let, let, let them see how the sausage is made, as they say. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, you'll probably have more bloopers from me than the actual show content. So what new item you got this week, Matt? All right, so... Microsoft Edge has come to Linux. Now, uh, about six months ago, Microsoft announced that it was leaving its own proprietary um, browser magic behind and moving to a Chromium-based web browser. And then surprisingly and shockingly, they decided that they would bring out that version of Microsoft Edge for Linux. And OMG Ubuntu this week managed to get a a first look at it. And from everything everybody, uh, you know, has has been saying... It actually looks pretty good. Now, I don't use Chromium at all, or Chrome. I'm a Firefox guy. Um, no, I, I don't use a terminal-based 
browser. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I looked into them. They're not that great. Um, Ooh, no. But um, from everything everybody said, the YouTube videos I've watched, the Microsoft Edge for Linux looks – it looks like Chrome. <laughs> I mean, I hate to say it. It's like wh- why – I mean, every, it looks good, but it looks like Chrome. That's what I'm so confused about. It's like why – did they bother creating this and then just have it look exactly the same as Chrome? Now, I mean, I, I mean, it has some different features, um, like the settings menu apparently looks different and has privacy, um, different privacy options and stuff. Um, but for the most part, it looks like Chrome. And other than the, that privacy stuff, I'm not exactly sure why you'd want to use that instead of, you know, Firefox. Because Firefox has even more privacy options, or Brave even. If you if you had to use a Chromium base, why not use Brave, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, Brave. I'm just conf- I'm Brave. confused as to why this exists on Linux. I mean, Microsoft supposedly hates Linux. I mean, they don't ha- hate Linux anymore, but uh, it just seems like a waste of their developers' time to me. That's my opinion on it. I mean, obviously, uh, throwing a bone or something like that. I mean, there is um, the vast a, a very small minority of websites that people may well be able to use that that that, that do does work to, um, correctly on Edge, but I've done exactly what you've you've done. I've, just to save install it, I've just watched some um, YouTube videos. Uh, performance is about the same as Chromium. Chromium maybe comes out a a, a bit a couple of milliseconds ahead on certain things but yeah i mean i take it or leave it the choice is yours but what does every windows user first do they open up edge they download chromium firefox and they can't delete it (laughs) but that's what everyone ever really that i've ever come across ever used edge for is to actually download the actual browser of their choice but we'll see some people are looking forward to it and using it but We've got that much choice in web browsers. Yeah. Well, I, I think... Each to its own. Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that it, sh- I mean, it shouldn't exist. I'm just saying that a lot of people yeah, are yeah. looking at this as a, like a precursor to Microsoft bringing their other software to Linux, like, you know, Microsoft Word and all the rest That's of the Office suite stuff. Like, yeah, I don't even know. I, I can't I, see that happening. I mean, it'd be cool but, if it did, but I don't think it's going to... I mean, because they did, they, they did bring Teams over last year, yeah. and, and now they have this, so, I mean, maybe, but it just seems that they, they did bring it to Mac, and nobody, I mean, but more people use Mac than, than use Linux, so I mean, it doesn't seem like something that they do. So, I, I don't think that this is the harbinger of Microsoft software we expect it to be, um, and it'd be different. It's a start. Would, yeah, I, oh, yeah. It'd be different if it wasn't so. running on Chromium. Everything runs on Chromium, right? So I mean, it's, yeah. It would be cool if they'd, if they'd forked Firefox. You know, I mean that that'd be more interesting because there's not a lot of great forks of Firefox out there. Um. So I mean, that would have been more cool. That would have been more interesting to me. Uh, anyways, what about your link? Um. Yeah, I'm going for a an OS. It's called um, Scepter OS. Um, I was just on Distro Watch for what um, it's worth when you you sort sort through the page rankings and whatnot. Um, I just noticed this um, trending recently. I mean, it's a uh, it's basically for your tour tour anonymity uh, with KDE. So it's a nice looking um, little distro. Um, I've only messed about with it I, I was able to get onto stuff that's blocked from my home um i mean i've got web safe so i can't go on any gambling or any sites like that i just tried the gambling no, nothing else major <laughs> um but it got me through so if if you just want to keep a usb to the side um just to stop getting tracked if you're looking for certain things online cars or whatever or you're shopping it seems fine um it's nice looking um relatively lightweight um doesn't come with a lot but you can also always in, in install what you want but all worked out the box where i used it for um seems okay so if anyone's looking for a some sort of tour alternative to tails or things like that um you may want to give this a, a try with the um, nice looking kde support yeah, it looked good it looked good based on debian stable 
Um, mm-hmm. I've never had success since tolling Debian before. I've never. I mean, I've only tried once. So, but we'll. Uh, maybe I'll well, give this a try. What well, Debian? Yeah, it's based on Debian. Stable. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you'll be using apt a lot. All right, let's yeah. get to our main topic. This is your topic this week, Martin. So why don't you explain to us what the main topic of this week is? All right, so it's elitism. Is there a danger of the penguin master race? I mean, we've all heard of the PC master race. Um, I mean, I think, well, there's no two ways about it. The elephant in the room, that there is elitism in Linux because you have to be quite computer to actually go down the route of installing uh, Linux. Um, it isn't a case of it, it well, it obviously is coming pre installed now, but people have to burn the distro, they've got to log out of uh, disable fast boot on Windows, they've got to press escape, F two, F ten, delete, whatever, get into the BIOS, change your settings, um, and start up Linux and go through that. So I mean you've got to you have got a big computer to use Linux. Um and, and I do think that the vast majority majority of us are are tinkerers and tatters that that actually love um, having the system exactly how they want. Um, I mean, in terms of elitism, obviously there's your your power users and things like that and and your noobs and and, and various things like that. It's just, I'm not, I don't want to say it's not noob friendly, but you do have to do a lot of digging for certain things. And you might well pull a web page up from 2010 and you're just scratching your head. And you could go to the forums, obviously, and try and find someone with the same problem. Or if you're unfortunate enough to actually ask a new question, you're going to get the read the F in manual. Or haven't you tried top right, there's a search button, type in your query. But there's certain bespoke things that you may actually look for that are not coming up on your search criteria i mean i did a a search for something before couldn't get anything so i I dropped it in the chat and someone came back to me quite quickly but it it was like oh if you checked out the so and so and had a look here you'd have saw this and i like got back and says oh yeah thanks i did do a search couldn't see anything but for other people that's searching for the same thing here's a link below and i just saw and I'd saw this before with different ones. I'll search. <clears throat> if the moderators, why well, can't they just say, oh, yeah, it's quite easily searchable. Please see the link down below so people can click it. And, I mean, I'd check my um, query a couple of days after, and there was like 60 people that had hit it. So it wasn't a case of it, it was a noob noob. Someone had actively searched for this question and got the answer. I just think it, it, little things like that. that and I think... People used to Linux actually forget exactly what it is like when you do start. Terminal can be scary. I mean, it's, it can be a cinch if you've got the right instructions. You're only copying and pasting unless it <coughs> from a reputable site. You don't start copying and pasting any old scripts. Um, I mean, what do you think from your side? How, how long have you been using Linux? So I've been using it full time since 2017. Um, but you're right. Um, you're right sometimes martin i think uh, i think that it really depends on what community you're in so like the arch community is notorious for read the fu- read the effing manual yeah, yeah right i mean you go to the arch you know you write the forums or the uh the um reddit or whatever and you know they're going to point you towards the arch wiki and the arch wiki is great i mean it's a, it's a fantastic resource but it's not written in language that's you know understandable by someone who's never used a computer for like you know my mother could go to the arch wiki and like what the what does any of that mean right you know it's not gonna she's not gonna know what you know it is um but i think other communities are much more you know quote unquote noob friendly so like ubuntu community is much more noob friendly they will tell you to do your yeah. searching first but um there i think because they attract more new linux users uh they're more uh, interested in helping people, even if it's a obvious question. Um, but because basically, the Linux world or whatever is based on two main, uh, 
you know, for, for the desktop anyway, it, see, it feels like the vast majority of people are either using something that's based on Ubuntu, either Ubuntu itself or Mint or, or whatever, um, or they're using something that's based on Arch. And I think those communities are really kind of opposites of each other in terms of noob friendliness. Now, I mean, obviously there's uh, – then you get into the whole Red Hat and CentOS and OpenSUSE communities and stuff, and, that, and they're – they could be very prickly too. Like, um, Open Suza does a really good job with their community. I've, I've, I've experienced. But if you try to get into like, uh, the like Fedora or whatever, it, some of that, some of their support is not all that great either. Um, but I think it really depends on both the community and which question is. I mean, because I mean, some people ask questions that are very, I mean, very simple. But I think all. I mean, because you, you're talking about how hard it is to get into Linux and for like a, a new user, and um, uh, w way back when Ricky was helped me do this podcast, we talked about one of the things that was kind of preventing Linux from going mainstream, and one of the things we talked about was uh, having to go through and um, you know burn burn an ISO and getting into your you know legacy BIOS and all that stuff. And that, I mean, that's yeah. the, the biggest hurdle, right? And finding information on how to get past, like, like formatting your disk, you know, GDR, MBR, or whatever, you know, because Windows requires one and Linux requires another and um, it can go on the other. And it's very, it's all very confusing. And it's not easy when any Joe Schmo can go on the internet and publish a blog on how to, and they might not know what the hell they're talking about. You know, it's the yeah. it's the PPA problem. Like in Ubuntu, you get uh, your PPAs or whatever, and they might be out of date. So you know, by years and years. Um, so you might get online and find instructions that no longer apply to Ubuntu or Arch or whatever. They're from 10 or 15 years ago. You know, so it's 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 a huge problem. Um, I'm not sh I'm not sure about the elitism thing though because i mean are there linux really linux is is the problem of people wanting or not interested in helping new users really elitism or is it just uh i, I don't know stubbornness no. or uh, 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 disinterest in having new users at all i don't know it's it's something yeah I mean, it's like when, I don't know, when some drama happens, whether it's um, Mint not having snaps pre-installed and, and things like that. At the, at the end of the day, um, it's down to the de developer, things like that. Um, I mean, obviously, people get tribal. Um, but at the end of the day, Linux is there for choice. I mean, you've got, you could sit there for four hours and just tat about with the amount of stuff that that's available to you it's, it's just what i do enjoy about linux is it, the amount of stuff that you literally can do and like well look i've, I've done that or i've changed this or i've changed my desktop environment things like that but with the yeah the elitism i mean with the pc master race i mean they just think that better than everyone else and obviously there are parts of that to to every software look at apple <clears throat> your apple people things like that but yeah it, it there is elitism for sure definitely but <clears throat> as there is with everything else i just think um i mean there's got to be really at the end of the day there's got to be someone that's a lot better at linux than the next guy um, I just, just from like a, a new user coming in, it's like you know, it maybe a bit more helpful. Like you say, the Arch wiki um, may well be difficult for your average person to read through because you you pick up information day by day, week by week. Um, but like as opposed to oh, here you go, just just start them on arch and things like that but it's like okay so well now if you're going to start anywhere ubuntu i mean ubuntu was brilliant years and years ago because you, you actually had a cd with your magazine that was free or something like that with ubuntu in so you could just get started read the information and and, and try this new operating system 
It's like an AOL disc back from the day. <laughs> oh, I found one of those the other day when I was in the loft. <laughs> I, I, I have I have a book in my view right now. I can see the book. It's like three feet away from me. It's on Ubuntu 8, 8.10, I think. And it still has the CD in it. <laughs> so and I also can see a, a, a certification thing for Red Hat Linux... Uh, I'm not sure which Red Hat it is, but that also has the CD in it. I don't know why I keep these books, but I still have them. <laughs> that's that's, that's how long I've been interested in Linux. Those, those things are really old. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but I, I, I have a bone to pick with this Linux elitism thing, Martin. Mm-hmm. Linux, Linux is better <laughs> than <laughs> Windows. It is, just is. Uh, I, I, I don't... It can be argued that you can do more on Windows than you can on Linux. It can be proven that you can do more on Windows than you can on Linux for the most part. Um, I don't necessarily think that that's the right way to look at it because you can pretty much do everything on Linux that you can do on Windows. You just have to do it differently, right? Um, Yeah. But I think anybody who actually gets in and starts learning about Linux and using it and adapting their their workflow to actually – like. once you've moved off and away from Adobe products and learn how to use GIMP and Inkscape and all and Kden Live and all that stuff, you 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 adapt, um, and you may miss some certain features from those products, but you also then when maybe you you are like me and you log back into Windows and it starts doing crap that you're <laughs> that you forgot how annoying Windows can be. Um, I think that's it's 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 hard to it's kind of a um I, I don't know what the word to describe it it's a an overall sense that Linux is better in, in so many different ways but I mean Linux has its own problems too I suppose so it's hard to argue it's just really hard I've talked myself out of the argument that Linux is better but um I think that Linux is is way better but does Linux? I guess the the question I want to ask is: Does Linux elitism? I mean, say I agree with you. Linux elitism is there. Does it hurt anything? I mean, because obviously it hurts that noobs can't get the help they want. But then they, do you think that they're they're scared away from Linux altogether? Or they just try a different distro and find help elsewhere. Yeah, I think a good introduction. I mean, there's, there's plenty of. Uh, videos out there on YouTube, uh, just the right introduction from the right people um, to get started on it, things like that. I mean, there's no bones about it. Linux is is far better than Windows in, resource, in resources uh, and the way that you can stick it on a laptop from 10, 12 years ago, and you, even longer. Some you of can them. update whenever you want to update. That's my favorite part about Linux. <laughs> the, well, yeah, you, you could just... Let it update while you're actually working on it. Um, I was thinking about it the other day, actually. I was thinking, yeah, games, catching up now, getting a lot better. Go down the Proton route if you want, that's fine. And then I thought, one thing that Windows has got over Linux is the printer drivers. <laughs> you've had I problems Linux, with... You've had I problems think with users have, yeah, I think Linux users have a lot of problems with printer drivers i think i haven't got one set up yet um I'm, i know i've saw a couple of things as I'm, I'm trailing through i think brother's about your best bet to have some decent linux support but I have they're only going to cater to the majority aren't they i have an epson and it's wireless and it works fine i've never had wow. any problems with it um no it doesn't have full functionality like i can't go through and use the the scanner wireless scanner. Or whatever. yeah um so i'd had to win, do to go to windows on that but I mean, who scans anything nowadays? I mean, I mean, yeah. I, I, mean I just, I, I, the funny thing is, I have had to scan something because I say, I say who scans something, but I had to scan something like I don't know four or five months ago, so I had to go into Windows. Um, so I mean, I guess you're right, the the printer things, but I mean, I think, do people really print that often? I mean, is that really? I mean, I, I think if you're looking at the the biggest hurdles to get into Linux, 
uh, you're looking at installing it to begin with, you know, getting past the ISO and getting into the, you know, the boot menu and all that stuff, because I mean, every computer is different. How, I mean, how do you get into your, the boot menu on your computer? You, it, you know, maybe it's F12, maybe it's escape, maybe it's F1, maybe it's G, yeah. maybe it's R. It, it, you know, it could be <laughs> any of those things depending on what computer you have. And you have to, you have to be deliberately interested, I mean, really interested in installing Linux in order to go get on Google, search for your specific model of computer and find out how to do that. And it's the same yeah. way with, you know, um, you know, learning how to use a package management. So, you know, if you're in Ubuntu, you have to learn how to use apt or you have to you learn how to use their, um, you know, their, their software things. You have to learn how to use snap. You have to, whatever, if you're on Irish, you have to use, learn how to use AUR. I think the thing about Linux that, it really diff differs the Linux user base from the Windows user base is that Windows users can just go on there and things just for the most part work. And when something goes wrong, they either throw their computer in the trash or they take it to the Geek Squad, you know, or <laughs> whatever. Um, if you're on Linux, you start off with the idea in your head that you have to learn. You have to think and you have to be willing to go out and search for the answer. Um, and if you're not willing to do that, I think I think that that's really what leads to a lot of the whole read the effing manual thing is because every Linux user has to be willing to go out and learn on their own. And they if they don't have that willingness to learn uh, and find out the answers on their own, they're going to encounter the problems of asking stupid questions um, or noob que – excuse me, not stupid questions, noob questions um, – and uh, that's where they're going to encounter that wall of, hey, you want to, this is, this answer is like really readily available on Google. Because, um, I mean, in my experience, I mean, remember, I'm much more removed from being a noob than, you know, other people. Um, but in my experience, I've, um, you know, I, I've come across some of the, you know, you know, go read the manual thing. I mean, everybody has. But, I mean, for the most part, if I've actually asked a really good question and I haven't, you know, and there really isn't an answer on the Internet, most for the most part, I haven't seen the, you know, pushback of not being able to answer. I've gotten, for the most part, I get my answer to the question. Now, Arco, what I've used for my daily distro, the guy who runs it, he's the most unhelpful person in the history of the universe when it comes to, <laughs> to, to support um, because he makes YouTube videos on every little feature. And he's made like 1,700 videos on his distro. And that's like, I mean, that's like really impressive, right? But when you ask a question on their Telegram or whatever, he goes, go find the video. Like, dude, you've made 1,700 videos and YouTube searches about the most trash you've ever seen in your life. How am I supposed to find the, vid the specific video on the one problem I have? And it's the, uh, I don't know. So, yeah. Are you ready for the apps now, or you got anything more to say about the Linux elitism? Martin? No, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely agree that once you actually dive in and you, you go over the hurdles and things like that, um, Internet's a wonderful place, a bit of Google foo. Um, once you've showed the interest and you're actually on board with it all, and, and you've got used to using different packages and whichever one fits the way you like, I mean... Yes, yeah, some of them aren't very good looking, but they're all improving and, and getting better and better. I mean, there's some absolute brilliant apps on Linux that you just wouldn't find on Windows without reading every single thing. Be, t be careful what to click in case you've got Chrome installed with God knows how many web pages that it keeps booting you in. There's never anything like that on Linux, which is absolutely superb. But yeah, it's just a good little topic to ch chat about, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day, there's, there's hierarchies in, in everywhere, tribalism everywhere, but yeah, oh, definitely. It's it, it's always what I use is the best, and what you use is the worst. That's the way humans are. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, look, well, look, yeah. Look at um, look at um, automobiles. Like so, I mean, I I don't, you know, there are Ford people and there are Chevy people, and if you drive a Chevy, Ford suck. If you drive a Ford, Chevy suck. I mean, it's just the way people. I mean, 
Other than saying, you know, I bought a Ford because it was cheaper than a, a Chevrolet or whatever. I mean, people aren't really honest about that kind of thing. Like, I, maybe I just use Linux because I don't want to pay for, for Windows uh, license fees, you know? I mean, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's one possible reason that you use Linux, and that's, then you have no elitism right whatsoever. You're just a cheap person. You know? Yeah, Anyways. why not? Yeah. Apps yeah. of the week, Martin. Why don't you go first? Yep. Uh, so my app for this week, um, I've got it from Jason from Linux for, for Everyone. Um, I'll leave a link below um, so you can check out his um, YouTube video to actually um, see it up and running. But it's called Edex UI, and it's basically uh, opens up in a command a terminal. So you've got a lovely groovy terminal. Um, it, if you've got a touch screen, even better because you've got all your letters down there. You've got various information. Um, I myself have added like the, the matrix thing to it, so I'm full on hacker, so I've got that scrolling through it. But it's a really nice thing to have. I mean, especially if you've got a second screen, you could just have that running in the background. It's got all your um, system resources, various information. It, it, it just really is super neat. Um, you can actually watch um, a, a film in ASCII art on it that Jason's popped on his video. So, um, yeah, check that out, definitely. Yeah, it looks cool. I haven't had a chance to download it yet because I just got to the link today, but it looks really nice. Um, so mine is a command line program, uh, you know, because elitism. Uh, well, if you have to do everything in the command line, that's that's fine. <laughs> I like doing things in the command line. I can't explain why. It gives me my, my nerd cred, okay? It, I got the badge. It says I'm a nerd. So I got to use it. I mean, if I don't use the command line, I'm not a nerd and therefore the end of the world. Anyways, mine is called something called YKit. So um, Wikipedia is a thing that people use. Uh, <laughs> it's not the best thing in the world because there's a lot of misinformation on it and stuff like that. But, you know, whatever. Um, if, you, if you find yourself visiting Wikipedia a lot, but you don't actually want to use a browser like a normal person... You could be a nerd and get use YKit. It's basically a command line tool for searching and getting brief snippets from uh, Wikipedia. Now, one of the reasons why I like it is because you can build it into your app launcher. So if you, if you use Dmenu or Rofi or something like that, or if you're a programmer, you could probably implement this into something else like um, Albert or Alfred or whatever it is. Um, and you just you know, do a brief search, and it just shows you the summary. So it's kind of brings up, like you know, when you go on Google and you um, search for something, and often to the right there's a little card that shows you a little blurb from Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. That's basically what this does. Only it's in your terminal, and you don't have to give Google any of your information. It's just you know, it just gives you a small, little bit from usually the first part of a Wikipedia article, and that's it. It's very simple. Um, I'm. It doesn't say what it's written in. I'm not sure. Oh, JavaScript is what it's written in. So, you know, take that way it is. But it's, you know, it's really cool. I don't, I don't use it yeah, that it often, so nice. but it's uh, it's just something that I have installed on my computer, and it, you know, it works. Yeah, it's and easy, I guess. Yeah. So that's uh, that's mine. Um, you know, I feel like Martin, I stole the hosting duties away from you. No, no, I need, I need steering, definitely. <laughs> like, 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 you started out, and then I just, you know, I'm just so used to being the man in charge, I decided to take it off. So that is a, I'm just going to go ahead and close it out, because I'm, I might, as, if I'm going to thieve it away, I might as well just, you know, steal well, it all together. On. On, <laughs> if you want to, all the contact information was covered at uh, the beginning of the show, uh, at the Linux Cast on Twitter. Make sure you, you remember the because it, we, we don't have at linuxcast it's the linuxcast we have it wrong with the docs we have it have to change that um uh, if, if you want to make sure you subscribe to us on youtube we, i have been putting up some uh linux videos over there about two or three a week um mostly just nonsense videos they're kind of horrible but if you want to see the horribleness of my youtube video career go ahead and hop on over there and give us a subscribe make sure you subscribe on all of our uh 
podcast feeds or whatever you can find us on anchor spotify apple Podcasts, all those things and you can find all of those links at the linuxcast.org and uh coming up next week what is our topic next week i've forgotten our next week is oh linux permissions we're going to talk about linux permissions and how terrible terrible they are so we talked about the um the uh barriers to entrance on linux one of the things i've been using linux since 2017 full-time and I still suck at Linux permissions. We're going to talk about that uh, in detail next week. So uh, we'll see you then. Looking forward to it. See you later, guys. <laughs>